Hello, good afternoon, good evening. It's Melanie Moore here. Got my name correct this week. I changed my name recently and um, I still forget who I am. Um, welcome to this week's episode of Big Vision TV. And um, so excited. I say every week, I'm excited about my guests every single week. Um, this week, we um, I'm going to be talking to a lady who I met um, earlier this year for the first time and she inspires me hugely because she is a lady who just takes action she you know I was just talking to her just before I've gone live um she thinks about something and then she does it and then she thinks about something else and then she just does it and how many of us think about doing things and just think a bit more and think a bit more and then think well maybe next year or maybe when I've lost a bit of weight or maybe when the stars are aligned maybe when Mercury's gone direct maybe then I'll do it but no not my guest tonight now I'll just tell you a little bit about Big Vision TV um, this is something that I've been doing since May this year now my weekly show where every week I will be bringing you somebody who inspires me and who um, I think will inspire you, inspire you to take action towards your big vision. Now, I believe everyone has got a big vision, that, but for some people it's hidden a bit more deeply than others. And some people need a little bit of help in bringing their vision to life. Now, um, this show is sponsored by my program, Create the Dream, which helps you to get clear on your vision to help you to kind of rediscover um, your goals and your dreams and then through the process through not just any old process my process of creating a vision board helps you bring that vision to life so you can find out all about that at melaniebundock.net slash create the dream so without further ado let me bring my guest on really excited to bring Nicole DiRocco. Here we go. She is joining us now. Yay! Hello. Hi, Nicole. How are Hi. you? I'm hey. doing great. Good. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Um, I know it's Thanksgiving tomorrow in the US, which is, you know, it's huge, isn't it? It's, is it as big as Christmas or is it bigger than Christmas? It's definitely like, I feel like once Thanksgiving comes around, we're like rolling into the holidays. So it's definitely a big time for me and my family to get together, my husband's family, and just, you know, start that holiday tradition. Oh, I love it. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit envious. I think it's such a lovely um, celebration. I've got a lot of friends in the US. Now, we don't officially celebrate it here, but I feel like doing something special with my children because I think just giving thanks every day is you know something we should all be doing anyway not just one day a year yeah no definitely and i think it just goes back to like how can we bring that that attitude of like being grateful and have gratitude every day i think it's like a constant reminder for me when i'm when i'm feeling grateful that just that energy that i bring out um i don't know it's about love and family so Absolutely. i can't wait to dive into what we're going to talk about because this is no. uh, i love this i love okay. talking about all this stuff with you absolutely so, um Let's just kind of dive straight in the straight in there. Now, I've already described you. You're the CEO of Nicolita Swimwear. Um, you have been on, is it Multi-Billion Dollar Buyer? Is that the name of the show? <laughs> Billion, Billion Dollar Billion, Buyer. Billion Dollar, yeah. buyer. <laughs> Billion Dollar Buyer, which was, um, it's like a reality show, isn't it? Yes, I, I'm obsessed with like these business, I'm such a business reality show nerd as it is, but the fact that I was on a show like that blew me away. Even when they were filming, I'm like, oh my God, I am on a business reality show right now. But yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's a big deal. It's kind of in the lines with like Shark Tank and it's, um, it was just a huge opportunity for me that happened just a few years ago. Mm, that's amazing. So we're going to dive into that a little bit more. But then also, you know, going on a complete tangent, you were an Emmy nominated um, film producer. Yeah, I know. So I am a swimwear designer, but through the evolution of, you know, attracting things and stuff that has happened to me, um, I did set out to film a documentary and lo and behold, it got nominated for an Emmy in 2012. I mean, that's just crazy and amazing. So 
let's rewind back to the beginning. And I know we just started talking about this before we went live. And I said, oh, no, no, we've got to go live. So <laughs> we just started to talk about the beginning of your journey and how you got into all of this. Because I think it takes a certain type of mindset um, to just be such a go-getter and to make things happen. And um, what do you think are, um, yeah, how would you describe yourself and why have you made all these amazing, amazing things happen? You know, where did it all begin? You asked me this prior and I'm not sure where it like initially began, but I definitely have had like that entrepreneurial spirit ever since I was just a child. I did like junior achievement. I remember I used to sell squeegees as like a randomly, I'm just remembering this right now, like a squeegee all in one. It was a class project and we had to sell a bunch. Um, and then I was a churro, um, a churro hot dog stand girl at like a local water park wow. at 14 years old. And just, I think just that idea and my, my father was an entrepreneur as well. So I think the idea of seeing, okay, you know, you can have a business, make money from it. So that entrepreneurial spirit, I think has been with me since I was little, but the moment where, um, I set out was just when I just wanted to start sewing and like being creative in college. That's when it really like struck me. Like I could, I could do something like this. This speaks to me mm -hmm. to make something and sell it. Yeah. And I, I would love to know what it is that kind of makes entrepreneurs because I kind of feel like, you know, I would never have a few years ago considered myself as an entrepreneur, but there is definitely something of an entrepreneurial spirit. I think it's just when you kind of look outside of the box and you look beyond what, you know, other people are doing. Um, and yeah, and, and what would you say kind of inspired you to, you know, take things a step further? And, you know, I want to take this conversation down the kind of the whole law of attraction route. <laughs> Yeah, that kind of thing. I mean, if we're starting off with with Nicolita, I think like you hit it right on the head. It was it was a matter of um, you know what what would make me stand out, and not until I filmed the documentary where I kind of uncovered some like personal stuff that I was dealing with. Um, when I was in school and growing up, I didn't want to stand out. I wanted to be the same as everyone else. Mm. I my family's from Cuba. There was maybe one other Cuban that I had known of in my city, um, unless we were in Miami where it's just all Cubans and that's just the way of life. But here in Orange County, I was definitely like the minority. And and to me, to feel like you stuck out as such a young child, I did not want anything to do with that. My mom would speak Spanish to me. I'd be like, no mom, please do not speak Spanish to me. None of my friends speak Spanish and just, Everything that I could do to not be that person that is, you know, going in the different path, standing out, um, I would try. And then I realized when you go into college, it is it, you have to stand out. You need to be selected. That is your opportunity to bring something different to the community and who you are as um, a member of the school and the board. So it was then this discovery of, oh, my gosh, my strengths are the fact that I am so different. And I think that is really where like this idea of wanting to connect with my roots of being Cuban, starting my brand from that essence of self-discovery and who I was to the documentary. Like it's, it really started at that point if I'm gonna like kind of map that out. And um, that desire to connect with who I am just became more and more apparent as I went on through school and then starting my business. And then it led to really the documentary. Mm, that's that's incredible. And so let's talk about the beginning of the, the swim, the fashion line. Um, again, now, I am a customer of yours. I yes. <laughs> I haven't been brave enough to post a picture of me in a bikini on Instagram just yet. But uh, <laughs> Well, you were rocking the leopard in Vegas, so you definitely have to post this picture. <laughs> mm, I might have to do some tapping first. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, so Nicole um, is the CEO of um, Nicolita and swimwear brand. And so did you always have a creative, you know, you did you study fashion and um, art at college? Is, was that what you're, you majored in? No, I studied business. I was in the business school at USC, but 
I had loved watching like HGTV, like home decorating shows. Like I loved going to the fabric store. And I think that's just really where my, my passion for being creative and who I am as a businesswoman like merged. And it's funny because I was in one of my business classes and I remember um, I did the entrepreneur program once I started to see, okay, maybe I want to do something with this. And I remember my professor saying, listen, your businesses, they do not have to be a sexy business. It does. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It could be, he used to make little buttons with like smiley faces. Um, you know, those little like flare, like be happy buttons. He had this yeah. huge button factory, nothing super sexy about that. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I want to start a swimwear business. This is probably the sexiest type of business I could possibly create. But I would go, my school was in downtown Los Angeles, which is really the hub and the epicenter of the fashion district. And I would just go and not knowing I'm going to start a business, just start to get fabrics and get inspired. And I made a little handbag and soon enough, all the girls in my sorority, which each sorority at my school was at least 200 girls per, um, per house would just ask me, Hey, where did you get that? Where'd you get that? And you know, as the story goes, I decided, okay, if you guys want one, you guys can order one for Christmas. And within an hour I sold 50 bags. I think I made a thousand dollars and I just, I got the itch. I'm like, I could build a business from this. This, it just blew my mind. So that year I sold 2000 handbags out of my dorm room and I knew nothing about the fashion industry. It was really, I, you know, it was like the desire to do something and you don't ask how the, how will come. Absolutely. And I think figure it out afterwards. Yeah, you figure it out afterwards. And, you know, we're so trained to be like, okay, I want everything perfect. I want it to do, you know, be this, this and that. And it, it wasn't at the beginning. I was late on some orders. I had to figure out how to make my pricing. I don't even think I made money, even though I sold so many of those units. But it just sparked this idea that I could build a business from this. And it doesn't matter that I don't know about fashion. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to reach out to the mentors. And everything just kind of started. I didn't real I didn't know anything about the secret, know anything about manifesting visioning at that point. But mm -hmm. now that I look back at it, I set out the intention to do this business and things just started to attract to me. You know, uh, my very first customer, once I started with my swimwear was Nordstrom's. Mm -hmm. Like that is a large department store out here. It was it was somebody that I said, okay, if I was gonna go and sell to any any big customer, what would be my dream customer? I said Nordstrom's. It's it's kind of like the Saks, the Neiman's. I, I'm not sure what um, a Harold's, Harrods. Harrods is yeah. That's a big. That's just a one-off in London. So yeah. Okay. Like uh, it, it would be something. It's something like that. It's a big deal. And yeah. um, I just said, you know what? I'm going to pick up the phone and I called the operator of their, you know, their dispatch. And I'm like, how do I sell swimwear to you guys? And she was kind of laughing and then she transferred me and transferred me. And I finally got to the buyer, which is rare that they would even pick up the phone. I said, hi, you know, I'm Nicole. I, I have a swimwear line and um, I want to sell swimwear to you guys. And she's like, okay. I think because I did not have that traditional, you know, pitch, she yeah. kind of laughed. It was like, just get on a plane and come up to San Francisco and present your line. I'm like, okay, well, I need to call you back because I need to, you know, I'm like, I, I didn't have the money to buy a plane ticket. I did not, I had to call my dad to ask him, what should I do? Can you, can I borrow some money for a plane ticket? <laughs> so it, it just, the stars aligned, whatever you want to call it. I went there, I opened up five of their department stores with my product and it was my very first year in business. And I was definitely, now that I look back, I was in a flow state. I was I, I wasn't the, my resistance to what I was wanting was not there. Mm. Now that I, now that I can identify it now that if, if I, you know, I listen to all of this stuff and listen to you and what you do and I can really identify, I was not resistant. I was not asking how I was just doing it. You and were just, that's when, yeah, you were just, um, you just, that's the thing. And I think, so many of us overthink things we really yeah. overthink it then we put the blocks in and then we think well that's never going to happen you know we already you know i can imagine somebody like you in a similar position well you know i'd really love to get my stuff into nordstrom but um there's no way in a million years it's going to happen i'm not experienced enough you know um i've got to do this great big pitch and um and you know who do I even contact? And actually, maybe I just won't bother. And and 
I'll just hesitate and second guess myself. Yes. yes. Just they just picked up the phone and just rang a number. I picked up the phone. And I think that sometimes I have the most clarity when I just, okay, this is what I want to do. And I just do it. I mean, I have reached out to some really big other um, brands and with their CEOs and a lot of other things have happened for me in that same context of, I almost like am having an outer body experience. I mm -hmm. forget how scared I am <laughs> of, of what I'm actually doing. And I just, I just do it. I just let my voice start speaking and I just do it. And I have to remind myself who I was 16, 17 years ago sometimes, because I think as you get older, you get in your head a lot more. I have more responsibilities. I have my children. I have my family. So, you know, those ideas of like, okay, well, what if it doesn't work? You know, those things still pop into my head. But um, I think I've trained myself. If this is something I really, really want to do, I have to put a, push aside those fears. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as best as I can do it, like move forward. Yeah, yeah. And that's just incredible and and I think if anyone watching you know if there's a take if there's something you can take away from this episode it is that if you want something you know just give it a go you never know what amazing things could happen but you will never know unless you just try unless you just take some really courageous action and you know very often um and it's some and I've heard many stories similar stories where it just it just works. It just happens. And yes, there's going to be some times when we get knockbacks and, you know, and it doesn't work. But too many of us let the fear of that, you know, stop us in our tracks, stop us from doing anything. So the thing is, just do it. So I want to come on to the next um, story now about how you, um, oh, by the way, the swimwear is amazing. I oh, thank you. I, I <laughs> print collection <laughs> and um, very flattering amazing swimwear so um, do go and check out um actually nicole if you could after this interview if you could pop a link to your sure. website in the comments that would be great um but yeah now about the documentary um which you were nominated for an emmy for now an emmy is a big deal you know we we've heard of the emmys over here they're big big awards um now you so let me get this right. One day you woke up and decided you wanted to do a documentary about um, your cultural roots. <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah, um, I know. Well, I mean, my whole business was built on the fact that um, I, my family had come from Cuba and I was just really inspired. You can't tell my wallpaper back here. It's all like vintage Cuban posters. So that girl that I was in elementary school and high school who I did wanted nothing to like you know, tell my friends I speak Spanish, like all that, that person became my story, became my story of empowerment of, you know what, I do want to discover who I am and look how cool it is to be Cuban. And I love the vibe. So I picked up on the stuff that I really wanted here in the States, you know, before you weren't allowed to go back to Cuba, definitely like a very traumatic moment for my family, um, where they had left everything behind for almost 50 years. And I was gearing up to about my 30th birthday. And I thought, you know what, I just, I need to go back. It feels like something is missing in my life. And um, that year, I think this was, yeah, 2008 or 2009, Obama lifted the regulations for Cuban Americans to go back. So I, it felt like, and I heard it on the radio, I was listening to CNN. I was like, this is a sign. This mm -hmm. is, if you don't see or hear the signs in your life, you're gonna miss, you're gonna miss the boat because I heard it on the radio and I said, this is a sign. And I took it as this is my opportunity to go back. And then I talked to my sister, I'm like, we need to go. And we're gonna figure out my parents because they, they did not want to go back. And mm. I said, okay, I'm gonna go and I want to film it. So I reached mm. out to a documentary company. They, they were expecting me to pay like some crazy number. I'm like, I don't have that much money to, you know, foot a full documentary. I'm like, maybe we'll just film it on our phones. And I ended up um, getting asked to become a judge on a reality show for this uh, model Latina TV show. And then when the producer had reached out to me, she's Cuban. She's like, hey, your episode's going to air in July. And I just told her, you know what? I'm going to Cuba and, and I'm going to film it. And she just said, hey, we would love as the TV network to, you know, bid for doing this with you, will you talk to our VP of programming? Never would I have ever thought 
to go and call a TV network to pitch my life story, to pitch the concept that I'm going to go to Cuba, which is not necessarily like regulated for just anyone to go and film. Mm. I'm not in the business of making a movie at all, but I tell you, the wheels started to get just get rolling with this concept. And um, before you knew it, I was on a phone with the TV network executive for programming. She was in New York and it's just funny. I was just telling her my life story and then she repeated it back to me. Like this is, this is how we're going to film it. But the catch was, is I had to be responsible to organize the whole trip. So I was, you know, producing, getting the visas, coordinating everybody. So they were like licensing it to me, but but they were scared as well because Cuba, it's the unknown. Imagine investing all this money and you can't even get the footage out. Mm. So um, I took on that risk and it was very, very challenging. I had many days where I was crying. I, I, I thought maybe this wasn't meant to be, um, but I knew I really, really wanted to go. Mm. I wasn't getting my visas. I'd call Washington DC. I almost got on a plane to go to Washington DC to go to the office where they give you a journalist visa. So much had happened prior and even at one point, we didn't get the visas. My dad said, this is a sign. We're not supposed to go. It's OK if we don't go. You can just, you know, you can quit. I'm like, I don't feel like this is my end. This is not where I stop. So um, long story short, we ended up sending the, the other producer to go. And he had to go in person to say, hey, it's a bikini company. No, there's nothing like sexual going to happen here. It's just we're doing a story about her life story and her family returning. And finally we got the visas. And um, if I would have stopped, I cannot even imagine not have fulfilling this part of my dream because this documentary has aired on TV, was on Hulu, as it was nominated for an Emmy, as a millions of other Cuban Americans and other families have watched this film. And I feel like I it was my responsibility to help people who did not want to go back, who were against going back, but show them what it could be like mm -hmm. and open up a conversation for my parents' generation, the generation before them to talk to the newer generation of Cubans about, um, you know, it's time for us to see the country our parents were from. And it, it like we had a lot of people who didn't want to talk to us from my family. He didn't understand what I was doing. And I think that happens too. When you have an idea and people don't get it, you get scared to take on that idea. You get scared because what is someone else going to say about me? What What is going to happen when none of my family talks to me anymore? Mm. But you know what? It was important to me. And I just had to keep going. And finally, it has just opened up a whole other side of my, my family now has been back six times. So they Cousins didn't, who said, didn't stop talking to you then? <laughs> no. Now they're like interested. Now they saw it. It was like. I don't know. I was very called to do that. I didn't know what was going to come of it. And then to find out later, you know, the nomination and just everything else that has happened since then. Um, it was one of the biggest challenges. I moved mountains to make this thing happen. But man, it has opened up like such a world for me to mm -hmm. say that I've done it. And um, lots of opportunities have come from that film. So you're a documentary Documentary maker as well, filmmaker. I'm a bikini, a nominated bikini designer. <laughs> there, there we go. <laughs> can, you, again, can you post a link? Can we watch that? Is it available on YouTube or? Um, yeah, it's on a Vimeo link, and maybe I could share um, share part of that link. Yeah, with great. you and yeah. your audience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I just love that story. Um, again, I think, again, if we go law of attraction here, you decided you wanted to do something this strong desire and I think when you know the most powerful man all the manifestations are born from desire when that you send out those powerful rockets of desire to the universe a universe listens and yeah doors open I've seen this time and time again in my own life it's magic mm -hmm. how it happens but you I think there's kind of a combination of desire plus feeling aligned but then taking kind of action as well but sometimes it's weird because it comes to you in order for you to take action you almost I didn't really like you got the you just happened to be working on the show and the tv studio um call you and say can we back this project and you know, it's just like the chances it's um it's a testament it, it is 
I, you know, sometimes I'm like, is this, you know, the law of attraction, is this like really a thing? Yeah, it has been time and time again in my life when I see when I want something, mm -hmm. um, I will get it. And I believe that I believe it. I believe it, but, and then I realize, okay, well, why am I, if something happens where I'm like, why am I not getting what this next thing is that I want? Or, you know, I don't know, like trying to vision like a new couch in my house or whatever, whatever it might be, or a, a new customer or a new collection or something else that I'm like, okay, I want to manifest like this next big thing to happen in my life. And I'm like, okay, why am I not getting it? One, it's probably because my why for it isn't as strong mm. as like, like I have to really connect with why it is and, and what is it going to do for me? And maybe I haven't seen the bigger, the big picture of it. And I'm like, okay, so I, I have to keep myself aligned. It's not, it's a daily thing. I mean, I listen to like Abraham when I'm taking a shower yeah. <laughs> or if I'm like feeling out of sorts, like I'm like, okay, I just need to like fine tune my mind meditation. I can, but it's hard for me. But I know that when I quiet myself, um, mm. you know, I've done your program too. Like having those tools and resources to think, okay, it's probably me. I'm probably putting off that energy that I don't need it now, or mm. I'm I'm focused on something else. So it, it works. It's amazing. Yeah, it really is a practice, and sometimes you know it happens really easily almost effortlessly and there are other times I think you know we actually have to learn lessons along the way it's just like the universe is you know you need to learn one or two lessons first before you can have this I think if you keep your eye on the vision it will always come sometimes you've got to be a bit obsessed with it like mm -hmm. I um, envisioning my dream home for a couple of years now but my why has only just got really strong in the past um, year or so since my parents have, you know, got a bit older and I can't think, actually, do you know, what? I would like to move them in with me. That's why I want this really big house. It's really quite compelling now. And I've actually said to my children, right, tomorrow, actually we're going to do this Thanksgiving day, which I think is perfect. Um, I've said tomorrow, we've got no activities after school tomorrow. We are going to sit down and make our vision board because we need to be clear as a family what we want. You two need to go on the internet and start looking at bedrooms and what kind of garden you want. And I am treating this like as a proper, you know, we've just been talking about, yeah, we want to move house. You know, we want a bigger house, but we've not really got intentional about it. So I said, right, kids, tomorrow <laughs> we're making this vision board. <laughs> so I think you've got to I've, be. I, I, I love that. Um, I love that. Yeah. And I'm, I, I, I want to see how I can instill this in my daughter and my children too, because, um, she even said, I want a beach house. I'm like, good. She's four. <laughs> I said, good girl. Put it on a board. Let's 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 get you there. You know, like I want her to see the power of, you know, what it is to vision. <laughs> because there are many parents out there who would say, not intentionally, because I think, you know, all parents want the best for their children. But very often, you know, the message will be told was, you know, don't set your sights too high. You know, that's just wishful mm -hmm. thinking. Um, you know. You, you can't ask for too much it's a bit greedy or you know you've got to be realistic that's never going to happen I um yeah you you're like me just go big you know why mm -hmm. why not we there are so many ways in which we can limit our children unintentionally but really they are limitless creatures we're all limitless we were born limitless we were born without any limits imposed on us at all but mm -hmm. as we got older you know we went to school and our well-meaning parents they they put limits on us yeah not, not intentionally it's just I'm limit. wondering like you know it's funny you say that because I mean I definitely see things that like language my mom and my dad have like from growing up and I'm like, no, no, nothing's impossible, mom. Like anything is possible, you know? And, and I'm wondering, even though I subscribe to all of this, I'm like, what else am I doing? Am I, am I doing too much visioning with my daughter? <laughs> am I telling her she can have anything? And then I've created a monster. Like, you know, I'm wondering like, what will be this ripple effect for her knowing, you know, having a mom like that just wants all of it. So it's just, it's just going to be interesting. I do have an answer for that actually because people have yeah. asked me the very same question and my children are a bit older now they're 11 and 13 and and sometimes they'll say you know we've been visioning this for a long time now why did it happen yet 
but I really do believe that things come, you know, at the right time that and sometimes that there's something better coming along so whenever we have that kind of vision it's always mm -hmm. a case of um this or something better and sometimes you know if it does go a bit wrong it's because you needed to learn a lesson on the way yeah don't yeah. mind my light i just realized um my battery was running late <laughs> or low so i switched okay. my cord so happening here that's fine i can yeah. see you just carry on okay. um, um yeah, yeah. I mean, I like even want to take her to, you know, different types of other, you know, events that later on, I think I'm going to just just dazzle it throughout her life to Absolutely. make sure she can accomplish anything she she can. And good for her for wanting a beach house at four years old, you know, like well, you no. ask for it. Just don't. Yeah, you, yeah. you'll get it. You'll get it. I love that. Yeah, so yeah. So on, so from everything, so every year since that documentary, I had gone back to Cuba to do these photo shoots that have been incredible. Um, I do on location photo shoots with my collection with real Cuban models. And it's just been, that's like the fun part of what I do and my connection back with my, my parents' homeland. So I remember um, my, one of my last trips, you know, I'm, I was kind of on the fence. I'm like, what am I going to do with my brand? I am I going to keep going and doing this every year? You know, what, what's that next step for Nicolita? And I'm like, just show me a sign. And I remember I was on the rooftop in, um, in, in Havana drinking like a margarita or not a margarita, like a, a Cuba Libre or something. And I get an email and it was the casting director for billion dollar buyer. I said, okay, what is this? They said, we want to interview, see if you'll be a good fit for the show. And I almost like blew it off. Then I realized, oh my gosh, I just asked for a sign and it yeah. came in the form of an email. So I'm like, let me, let me pursue this and see what's going to happen. And I got on the show and that, that moment of me asking, okay, what next? What's, what's next for me? What's next for my brand? Um, not asking like a negative question, but more like an, an empowering question of, okay, show me what, what, what is, what's the next step for Nicolita? Um, it was the show and the last two years from the show has just been another big wild ride. So you, you'd be, you'd be surprised if you feel like you're caught in that middle, that middle ground of, I don't know what to do next. Um, I didn't, I didn't know what my next step was that show came to me and it just said, you know, I said, reconfirm that I'm on the right track, reconfirm that I'm supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. And the show happened. I made the deal. I got huge distribution through that show and not only distribution with the billionaire, um, I, I was just seen everywhere on CNBC, on replays. And I've been on the show now a few times. What so, amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And amazing opportunity. I just want to rewind slightly to something I picked up on um, and this is something that I've shared publicly a lot on Facebook lives and you know I've spoken to my clients my coaching students that very often when we're at a crossroads we're feeling stuck and we don't know you know what to do next I always say the best thing to do is just quiet your mind go sit somewhere out in nature or even if just in your bedroom if you need to and just ask yourself the question what's my next step What's my next step? It's a little mantra. Just do it over and over again um, as a little mantra. What is my next step? And then just be open to receiving the answers because the answers come. They really do come. And it's almost it's, it's the perfect antidote to getting yourself unstuck to ask yourself that question. That's exactly what you did. So I love that. Yeah. And, um, and I feel like I, I might be like kind of in another like crossroads right now because I, I've always helped other entrepreneurs start, um, different products, fashion lines. I've never advertised it before, but I've been feeling very called to, um, show up in social media and in life more as a mentor, not only as what I've built with my brand, but really, um, advertising, I guess you could say that I help other people launch clothing lines and it's been hard for me to become visible because I was so scared to what are other people going to think? Um, can I really do this? Even though I've done this, you know, all those limiting beliefs and you've definitely, um, through what we've, where I've met you, you know, you've really helped me like see that I can do it. And now remembering all the accomplishments and all the manifestations that I have had, 
I had to connect with why do I really want to do this? Why do I want to show up as a mentor? Why do I want to show up helping other people? Um, why do I want to publicize it? And I think it's just that next chapter for me. So I'm kind of asking as well, okay, what's next for me? What's next for me? So you have in this a, in this stage. You've got a new baby coming along, haven't you? Not a literal baby, but a new project. <laughs> Are we could we talk about that? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's definitely talk about that. You've got yeah. a podcast coming out. Yes, yes. And um it wasn't since our like our retreat that um in August that it just why am I waiting for someone to give me permission mm -hmm. to do this and I feel so called again to help and just that that role that I've played for so long to other people that I said, you know what? The podcast just feels like such a great place for me to have the creativity connect with people like I'm definitely a connector and help people along the way and reach way more people than I could have ever imagined possibly. So it's called fast track your fashion brand. And I bring on, I mean, your, your episode number four, which I'm, I like to think outside of the box, like, like visioning and manifesting stuff that could help someone get unstuck and have the mindset to accomplish anything. Like, you know, you said, I think in the episode, you said become the next Versace or Gucci, why not? <laughs> why? Really, why limit yourself to Zania or, I don't know, I was, I was gonna say Sainsbury's, I think your version would be Target, wouldn't it? You know, there's anything wrong with designing for Sainsbury's or Target, a lot of people, no. it was a dream job for a lot of people, but yeah, you know, there are no limits with anything. Um, and and also what I love, you know, what you shared earlier is that you didn't have a background in um, fashion design, that and I think that that lack of credentials stops a lot of people from moving forward, not just in fashion, but in other areas as well. That they could think, well, I can't do that because I didn't st study that at university. You know, I've always wanted to become a chef or a food writer, but I didn't study food tech or whatever. Um, but it, you know, it's really not necessary. Well, you know, I want to become an actor but I didn't go to drama school. You know, there are so many kind of these kind of, that's another limiting belief that I need to have all the credentials and have studied in that field, become a master at it before I can go and put myself out there, um, which is not true. And there are many people who've gone on to, you know, yourself, for example, you didn't go to fashion. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I met when someone would be like, what did you do? Or what do you do? I would say, oh, um, I started Nicolita. I, I would never put as like my designation fashion designer until, which is, it's funny that we bring this up, um, maybe five years into me fashion designing all over the place and being at like depart. I mean, I, I did not, that label, it's probably I had a hard time identifying that imposter syndrome was it? Yes, total imposter. Who am I to be a fashion designer? Who am I to say that I'm a fashion designer? Well, fashion designers have to go to school, but it's not true. I mean, mm. I went to the school of reality. I went to the school of waking up early in the morning, going to the factory, selling my line, doing a fashion line. I mean, doing all the things that you have to do, which sometimes if somebody would have, maybe if I would have gone to fashion school, I think I might have would have been a little more stuck to be honest with you, because I would have seen all the things that I would need to do in order to launch a line. You would have seen a set path, but you made your own path. I made my own path and it was almost better. Yes, I learned a lot and I had a way bigger of a learning curve, but I think it got me ready to be here right now. And mm -hmm. like on my podcast, I'm all about fast tracking. So I want everyone to skip those crazy steps of the years of not knowing and the the money spent that never amounted in anything like I think that it just it gave me more credibility of experience really yeah. and if anyone out there feels like they're an imposter just go and help one person do what it is that you want to fulfill yourself and you'll get rid of that imposter syndrome very very quickly yeah that's absolutely brilliant so and when's the podcast launching Nicole oh my gosh okay so um, my challenge, I have a challenge coming up December 3rd for anyone that is interested in starting a fashion line or have an idea in the back of their head. I'm going to just help you flush it out. Even if you're not like ready to pull the trigger, 
I think it's just fun. We can have fun with this and vision. So I'm going to be lining that up with the podcast launch on December 3rd. I'm Amazing. really excited because we have, I have a bunch of episodes in the can, I guess you could say, um, along with yours. And I actually go more in depth um, on everything that happened with my documentary too. That's one of my, my bonus episodes for this launch. But yeah, December 3rd is going to be the official launch of the podcast. So you guys can binge listen, check out Melanie and me just talking about all things visioning and this fun manifestation, <laughs> what yeah. we've accomplished. If you could put a link to all of that, the channel yeah. and, um, um, I don't know if you've got a link for the podcast just yet, but certainly the name of it is it Fast Track Your Fashion Line. Is that correct? Um, it's Fast Track Your Fashion Brand. Fast Track's one word. So if you go on iTunes, you'll see my intro episode, but all the episodes will officially launch December that week for the challenge. And then, yeah, it's fashionbizmentor.com is where you can sign up. Once the challenge stuff goes live, I'll be sending you all the information. That's amazing. Oh, I've loved listening to this story again. And, you know, and I think whether or not you're in the fashion industry, you know, you may have no interest in fashion whatsoever. There are so many lessons that can be learned from this conversation um, that can be applied to anything you want to put your mind to. Um, so inspiring. And, you know, I, and I hope, you know, even if just one person just makes think, do you know what? I'm going to do it, you know, hashtag be like Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's an honor to have an hashtag. If any of your listeners have has a big idea and you're just stuck, I mean, reach out. You guys can reach out to me as well and Melanie and you can do it. Like this stuff can happen. I mean, no one is you, no one is going to give you permission to follow your dreams. So give yourself permission. I think that was the most powerful thing I've heard over the, the last six months and you can accomplish anything. Yeah. And life's too short to sit on your dreams and to not do anything about them. Um, you know, I said this many times before, it's the biggest regret of the dying that people didn't live a life true to their dreams and didn't go after their goals because they were worried about what other people might thought. They were worried they might fail, but it's the biggest failure of all to not even give it a go. So um, thank you so much for sharing your story, Nicole. Thank you. I'm gonna ask me one last question. So what's sure. next? What is your big thing <laughs> now? I don't know, hold on, let me ask. Let me, <laughs> let me ask the universe right now. What is next for me? Um, I mean, this podcast and kind of this next chapter for me is just really stepping more into that role as being a mentor and um, being able to help people accomplish this big dream of potentially starting a fashion brand or a clothing line. I just get a lot of satisfaction out of helping people and seeing them start from nothing to a brand and launching it. So. I am not going to figure out how I'm going to get there, but I want to just expand this and just keep reaching more people. So I really enjoyed myself on your show. Melanie, thank you for having me because maybe Sandra. if it touches one person to dream outside of the box, um, I hope they can accomplish something huge. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. Enjoy the holidays. Thank um, you. Yeah, good luck with the podcast. And I really look forward to seeing you soon. So let me just, um, I will release. Oh yeah, let's see who's who's commented. Yeah, we've got, um, um, Chris has, um, so Chris said, I feel forcing a manifestation draws resistance rather than the commanding and surrendering to the process. It comes so much more quickly. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, Chris. And I think, yeah, I think Nicole really, um, sum that up beautifully yeah so um just amazing um thank you so much nicole thank I'm you just gonna close the show off now and then i will catch up with you a little bit later so okay so yeah wasn't nicole amazing um just loved having her as a guest and um as i started the show just to quickly recap that this show is sponsored by create the dream my online um workshop where you can literally if you put aside a couple of days to get clear on your vision and i will help you through that with some special processes of mine and once we've made this vision board we talk a lot about vision boards on this show um 
to help you to stay aligned with that vision afterwards because that's really important and you can find out all the details at melaniebundock.net slash create the dream and I'll post a link to that afterwards so I will see you again this time next week for Big Vision TV. Um, thank, thanking Nicole again um, for being an amazing guest this week. And, um, and happy Thanksgiving to those of you celebrating. And I'll catch you next week. Bye for now.